Welcome to the 4.13 mid-season patch notes. I am Elu and I'm about to take you on a long trip of buffs and nerfs. I'll start you all with the easy stuff. Skins. Freya is receiving a Star Wars inspired Twi'lek skin. Ordo Aurora Freya will be available through the Void Chest, which contains 55 items and costs 200 gems per roll. Dodgy is receiving a skin similar to Bellona's last year. Foxy Lady Dodgy comes with its own voice pack and ability effects. The skin will be available through Summer of Smite for 400 gems. Dodgy's Dance Emote will also be available for purchase for 200 gems. Kaijumbo Kuzumbo is the second skin available through Summer of Smite. The skin will be available for direct purchase for 400 gems and features its own voice pack and ability effects. Our fourth skin is a tier 2 for Kurnanos. The skin features the base ability effects and default voice pack for 250 gems. Kukulin receives his mastery skins this patch. Both of his forms receive the treatment to his gold, legendary, and diamond skins. It's that time of the year again. Summer of Smite is arriving in 4.13, and with it, skins and rewards. The first two skins, Kajumbo Kuzumbo and Foxy Lady Dodgy, have already been revealed, with more to come. Complete two quests after picking your bonus reward to unlock it, like the Summer of Smite Aquarium pedestal. After collecting all 8 skins, you'll unlock a limited skin for Bacchus. Project Olympus is a coordinated effort to improve key existing features, like adding Direct 11 and resolution skating to make the game look and feel better. A high resolution texture pack will be available that will benefit those playing on a 4K display. A 64-bit version of the Smite client will roll out in the future as well. Players now have access to levels above 30 with a new cap of 160. Players who have accumulated experience past level 30 will be immediately set to the new level. As you can see on the screen, I am level 77, which would set me at the Elder Prestige. Triumphant Chests are a new system coming to Smite that will reward players for winning games every week. They will not replace daily logins and first win of the day bonuses. Any of the three winner, champion, and heroes chests will contain rare items. Unlocking a combination of the three rewards you with the godlike chest which will contain the rarest items including the exclusive head over heels cupid skin. Next up is map balance. I will run through these changes as fast as possible so bear with me. All lane minions now meet at 30 seconds. First brute minion will appear in the third minion wave. And there's a global audio played after defeating the Gold Fury and Fire Giant. Fire Elemental XP has decreased from 30 to 20 and their health has increased to 160 from 90. Elder Fire Elemental XP has decreased from 105 to 80. Oracle XP has decreased from 85 to 65. Mini Cyclops HP has increased from 55 to 58. Mid Harpy XP has increased from 55 to 58. Gold Fury XP has been decreased from 100 plus 10 per minute to 50 plus 5 per minute. Tier 2 Towers HP has been increased from 2000 to 2500. Phoenix HP has been increased from 2000 to 3000. Upon respawn, their health has been increased from 5% to 25%, and their max health has been increased from 40% to 70%. That wasn't so bad. And now on to relics. Ages and its upgrade no longer cleanse root or slows, giving players more counterplay. Blink Rune's cooldown has been decreased from 120 seconds to 100 seconds. The cooldown of its upgrade has been increased from 90 seconds to 100 seconds. And its upgrade now has a new effect. You take 10% reduced damage for 2 seconds. Bracer of Undoing no longer subtracts 3 seconds on all abilities. You'll now have to invest in the upgrade for this additional utility. And the mana and health restore has been increased from 50% to 60%. Healing reduction from the Cursed Ankh upgrade has been decreased to 50% from 65%. And the cooldown increased from 100 seconds to 120 seconds. The upgrade has a new effect as well. Enemies afflicted by Cursed Ankh have their mana cost increased by 20% and have the cooldowns of abilities fired while afflicted increased by 2 seconds. 
Heavenly Wings, the upgrade to this relic has its cooldown increased from 110 seconds to 140 seconds. And allies affected by Heavenly Wings upgrade are now immune from any slows. The Horrific Emblem cooldown has gone from 90 seconds to 130 seconds. Enemies afflicted by Horrific Emblem now deal 20% less damage to all targets. Magic Shell now provides an AoE shield at the rate of 100 plus 15 health per level, lasting for 3 seconds. Its upgrade extends that shield to all allies, who receive 2 times block stats that stop up to 2 basic attacks. Phantom Veal's crowd control and knock'em immunities have been removed but kept on its upgrade, which also receives a new effect and its cooldown increased from 130 seconds to 150 seconds. Allies affected by the Phantom Veal upgrade now take 15% reduced damage for 5 seconds. Shield of Thorns upgrade now has a cooldown of 120 seconds from 100 seconds. Enemies can lifesteal from the user for 50% of their total lifesteal. Thundering Spear now deals 15% of a target's current health instead of 30 true damage plus 12 damage per god level. The debuff causing the target to take increased damage has been removed, however, the upgrade still retains it at 20% instead of 15%. It deals the same 15% of the target's current health as damage. Teleport Glyph no longer teleports you to wards, instead you're going to have to upgrade. The cooldown for the upgrade has been increased to 200 seconds from 160 seconds. Now on to items. Bear with me y'all as I try and catch my breath. We're almost there so don't worry. Case in Fatalis is no more. The item has been removed from the game. However, three other items are being introduced in its place. Hazen Ring is an item for mages. It built off the enchanted ring and gives players 50 magical power, 25% attack speed, and 7% movement speed for 2300 gold. Hitting an enemy god with a basic attack will grant you haste for 4 seconds, causing you to be immune from basic attack movement speed penalty for that duration every 30 seconds, so use it wisely. Atalanta's bow builds off Hunter's bow and gives Hunters 30 physical power and 20% attack speed. Hitting basic attacks increases your movement speed by 7% per stack. This item stacks up to 4 times and stacks last for 2 seconds. Toxic Blade built off of Adventurer's Blade and gives 100 health, 10% movement speed, 20% attack speed, and 10 penetration. Enemies hit by your basic attacks gain a stack of 20% reduced healing. This stacks up to 3 times and lasts for 5 seconds. Hasten Katana is a melee only item that builds off Thousandfold Blade. It provides the user with 10% movement speed. 25 physical power and 25% attack speed. Basic attacks grant the user haste for one second. Shaman's Ring has been redesigned. It grants 60 magical power, 10% movement speed, and a new passive. Dealing 100 damage to enemy gods gives you a stack. At 50 stacks, Shaman's Ring evolves, gaining a new passive that allows the wearer to deal an additional 10% to targets hit by the wearer's abilities. Rangda's Mask now has a new passive. Each time you get an assist, you gain a stack, or two stacks for a kill. Stacks provide 1% movement speed and 1% cooldown reduction. At 10 stacks, Rangda's Mask evolves, granting 15 penetration. Ranged basic attacks from Frostbound Hammer not only apply a 20% movement speed slow, melee basic attacks still slow for the original 30% slow. Rage and Lono's Mask now evolve upon reaching maximum stacks. Bumbo's Mask healing received after killing a jungle monster has been decreased from 15% to 10%. Bancroft's Talon now costs 2,400 gold and its base lifesteal has been reduced from 20% to 15%. Physical protections from Dynasty Plate Helm have been decreased from 30 to 25 and its penetration decreased from 15 to 10. Celestial Helm has a new passive. Every 2 seconds you receive a stack of 10 physical protection. Stacks are removed upon taking physical damage from gods. Stacks can only be gained after not taking physical damage from gods for 5 seconds. Vampiric Shroud now has 10 physical protection. However, 4% magical lifesteal has been removed. The item also has a new passive. Damaging enemies with an ability restore 6 health and 3 mana. This can only be triggered once per target per ability. 
Ancient Blade now has 50 health, but 5% movement speed. Adventure's Blade health has been decreased from 150 to 100, and its attack speed has been removed. And lastly, Cursed Blade has been completely removed from the game. Which blade now built off of Adventurer's Blade. Its health has been decreased from 200 to 100. Its attack speed increased from 15% to 20%. 15% physical or magical lifesteal has been added to the item. Enemies within 55 units have their attack speed reduced by 20%. And its passive that stacks healing reduction debuff has been removed. The 10% attack speed on Winged Blade has been removed. The health on the Relic Dagger has been increased from 200 to 250. Its 10% attack speed has been removed. And it now comes with a new passive. Your relics receive 30 second cooldown reduction. The magical power from Demonic Grip has been increased from 60 to 65. Its attack speed decreased from 20% to 15%. And the 7% movement speed has been added to the item. The cost from Telkine's ring has been reduced from 2,800 gold to 2,700 gold. Its magical power has been decreased from 80 to 70. 10% movement speed has been added to the item and its 20% attack speed has been removed. The ring also comes with a new passive. Every time you deal damage with an ability, you gain a stack of 20 power up to a maximum of 3 stacks. These stacks last for 5 seconds. The cost of Enchanted Ring has decreased from 1,400 gold to 1,200 gold. Its 15% attack speed has been removed and the 5% movement speed has been added. The cost from Emerald Ring has also decreased from 650 gold to 600 gold. Its 5% attack speed has been removed and a 3% movement speed has been added. The cost of Druid Stone has decreased from 700 gold to 600 gold. Its magical protections has increased from 10 to 20 and its magical power has decreased from 20 to 10. The cost of War Stone has decreased from 1450 gold to 1350 gold. Its magical power has decreased from 30 to 20 and 50 health has been added to the item. Void Stone's cost has decreased from 2200 gold to 2150 gold. Its magical power has decreased from 40 to 20 and 150 health has been added to the item. The MP5 of Genji's Guard has increased from 20 to 40, 150 health has been added to the item, and the passive cooldown reduction has been increased from 2 seconds to 3 seconds. The MP5 of Oni Hunter's Garb has increased from 20 to 30, 100 health has been added to the item, the passive damage mitigation has increased from 15% to 20%, and its passive internal cooldown has decreased from 90 seconds to 60 seconds. Woo! We're finally done with the items and jump to the final section. God balance. Not a long one, but many changes to certain gods have been made. Let's begin! First up is Ao Kuang. Ao Kuang has received a couple of buffs this patch. His mana has been increased to 240 from 200. His mana per level has increased from 36 to 38. His MP5 has increased from 4.5 to 4.8. And his MP5 per level has increased from 0.2 to 0.41. Ao Kuang also has a new passive called King Sword. Each time Ao Kuang successfully uses his dragon form to execute an enemy, he gains a stack that increases his magical power and lifesteal. This passive stacks up to 3 times and the stacks are permanent. The magical power received per stack is 15 and the magical lifesteal per stack is 5%. Bakasura has also been buffed this patch. Large monsters that can only be eaten at 33% will provide 2 minions towards Regurgitate. And the cooldown on his ultimate has been decreased from 90 seconds to 90, 85, 80, 75, and 70 seconds. Bellona's base power has been decreased from 39 to 36. And the cooldown from Bludgeon has been increased from 10 seconds to 14, 13, 12, 11 and 10 seconds. Chiron is receiving a nice bump to his utility, clear and overall ability flow. Training exercise now applies a mark for masterful shot to all targets hit. Chronos now has a new passive, Time Lord. 
Kronos becomes empowered as time flows around him. Every two minutes, he gains a stack that increases his magical power. The passive stacks up to 25 times and stacks are permanent. Each stack gives Kronos three magical power. Kronos' old passive, Wheel of Time, has been moved to Accelerate. Stacks on funeral rites are no longer lost upon death, and Isis now gains 10% CDR upon reaching 10 stacks. Kuzumbo is receiving bonus utility effects that should help his performance. Targets hit by the throne Nene Kappa are now slowed by 20%. Sumo Slam's radius has been increased allowing for sharper turns. And its cooldown has been reduced from 16 seconds flat to 16, 15, 14, 13, and 12 seconds. The knockup from Watery Grave has been adjusted. Targets will not be knocked up into the air more and pushed to the sides less. Enemy players hit by Windfire Wheels now have an additional 0.25 seconds after the hit to use beads. Enemy players hit by Najra will not be able to fire beads on their way up into the air. If you miss a window to escape, you will have your beads protected to be used later. Nemesis playstyle has been adjusted to make her feel less reliant on her ultimate. Her scaling on Swift Vengeance has been increased from 50% to 60%. The base damage from Slice and Dice has been increased to 100, 160, 220, 280, and 340. The scaling on the ability has been increased from 50% to 60%, and the slow has been increased to 30% flat. And lastly, the protection shred from Divine Judgment has been decreased from 50% to 30%. Nuwa can now specify which enemy target she wants clay soldiers to pursue by marking them with her ability targeter. The range of this mark targeter is 40 units. Clay soldiers will pursue the mark target until it is dead. Clay soldiers will now dash through other targets, debuffing them. Raijin has received a rework this patch. Each ability has been adjusted with the goal of reducing frustration while empowering Raijin to feel effective in fights. His new passive charge tempo reduces cooldown of all abilities by one second for every five abilities cast. The first two shots from Percussive Storm now shoot down the center of the targeter. The last two shots are also closer to the center of the targeter. The shot radius has been increased from 3 to 4.5. The range increased from 65 to 70. The damage increased to 35, 50, 65, 80, and 95 per shot. The projectile speed has been increased. The scaling decreased from 30% to 25% per shot. And the cost decreased to 50, 55, 60, 65, and 70. Raiju now deals its damage over time. The damage has been increased to 15, 25, 35, 45, 55 every 0.5 seconds for 2.5 seconds. The scaling reduced from 70% to 13% every 0.5 seconds for 2.5 seconds for a total of 65%. Raiju now also applies a 15% slow to all marked targets. When Raiju is triggered, the slow and damage are spread to nearby enemies. The slow is increased by 15% on the marked target for a 30% slow. The cost for this ability has been reduced to 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80. And the cooldown decreased to 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11. Thunder Crash is now targetable until Raijin fades away to his new location. Taiko Drum's projectile speed has been reduced from 120 to 100. The fire duration increased from 4.5 seconds to 7 seconds. And the damage reduced from beat 2 and 3 from 50% to 30%. Duration of the protection buff from Blessing of the Nile has increased from 3 seconds to 6 seconds. Susano now has a new passive, Gathering Storm. Each time Susano successfully deals damage to at least one enemy god with an ability, he gains a stat. At 4 stacks, his next ability that hits an enemy god will deal bonus damage of 25 plus 60% of your physical power. Stacks last for 5 seconds. The base damage from Storm Kata has been decreased to 40, 65, 90, 115, and 140. And its physical power scaling has been decreased from 65% to 55%.
our last god Ur received some buffs this patch to help him with his late game. Bladed Arrow and Thrown Axe have their mana cost reduced to 50 at all ranks. Exposed Weakness and Invigorate have their cooldown reduced from 18 to 16 seconds. And the power changed to 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. Lastly, and certainly not least, David Allied Hans has been immortalized in the Conquest map. Hyrus is paying tribute to the respected friend of the Smite community with a Greek-themed statue with his name engraved. Players will be able to waltz by the monument once the patch goes live Tuesday, July 18th. A very long mid-season patch notes overview indeed. I hope y'all liked this first video of its kind on this channel. Type away your thoughts down below. Any constructive criticism will be noted for future video overviews to come. Bye.